Hey YouTubers, this video will cover the hidden engineering mode on the Manker T01. Manker recently disclosed on a thread on BOF that apparently the T01 harbors a hidden engineering mode and this particular mode will allow you to resolve the pre-flash issue. So for those who don't know what that pre-flash issue is, I previously covered it in my review of this light, but I'm going to demonstrate again here. It's basically when you have the lowest mode program into two lumens and you turn it on with a long hold. Did you see that? Basically it'll go full bright and then back down to the program mode of two lumens. Once more. Apparently this is caused when the forward voltage of the LED doesn't quite match the driver. So what they did was they actually programmed it in an engineering mode so that you could actually match it and thus prevent this problem from happening. Now how you get to that is First, you need to set your light into pro mode. I'm not going to bore you with the details here. Please hit up my original review for that, of how to access that. But basically, it's from off. You press and hold for 10 seconds until you see two flashes. That means you're in pro mode. Next, you're going to want to enter your programming mode. Easiest way is to just double click from off, go into strobe, once again for SOS, then to that beacon mode. Next, press into constant current turbo. Another press until you get to the battery reading mode, and then one more is when you go into that program mode of your low mode. So that's the low mode programming. Go into your medium. Now, in medium, this is where you need to double click. And it enters this fixed rate mode. Now I'm actually going to shut off the light so you can see that more clearly. This is now the engineering mode. From here, there's about 20 some odd clicks that you can click through. with each successive press becoming ever so subtly brighter. And once it hits the end of that maximum, it'll reset back down again as you see there. So currently I do have this program on its lowest mode, in engineering mode. So I'm just going to go to the next step up, which is actually a pretty decent jump visibly. Right there. Then I'm going to press and hold to exit out of my engineering mode. What this is actually doing is setting a new minimum for your lowest mode. So previously, my lowest mode was two lumens. It's actually upping that now. So when I press and hold, you'll see that the pre-flash has gone away. But at the same time, though, my lowest mode is now a little bit brighter, as you can see there. It's not exactly two lumens. So I shut it off. Go back in again. So you see it turns on with no pre-flash whatsoever. Now I'm going to reset that by going into the engineering mode again. So this is now the programming of the lowest mode. And from medium mode here, you go into the programming. Now you don't want to go too fast because you're going to accidentally exit out of here, the engineering mode. So just take it nice and slow. Cycle through the steps. And now you can see I've set it back to its absolute lowest in the engineering mode. Going to exit out here by pressing and holding. Turn it back on, but you're going to see the pre-flash now. As you saw there. Now to demonstrate that even more. You saw that? There's that pre-flash issue. So anyway, it's pretty cool that they built this in, but the pros and cons of it is that, yes, you could get rid of it, but you need to lose your absolute lowest mode, which is this nice little two lumens right here. That next step up, I haven't measured it yet, but I'll try to put dump it onto my PVC LMD to see what that is. But bottom line is that in order to prevent the pre-flash on certain models, right, where the LED didn't match the driver perfectly, it's to go into engineering mode, program it to one of those steps, and then you'll get rid of that pre-flash. Now one important thing is that while you can access the engineering mode using a 14500, I was not able to actually program it. I would enter engineering mode, keep pressing those buttons, and it would not do anything. The only way that I was able to get it to program it is by using a standard nickel metal hydride in this light. So keep that in mind if you're not able to program your engineering mode and you're using a 14500 cell. Flip over to a non-lithium ion cell and see if you could get it programmed in. Now this engineering mode is also available on the Manker U11 since it pretty much uses a very similar driver 
Now with the U11, unlike the T01, I was actually able to program all of this running on an 18650. So you can program it using a lithium ion. You don't need to run it with two primaries in order to go into engineering mode. As with the T01, enter pro mode first, and then from there, double click to go into your strobe mode. Another one to go through your brief flash. Another one for SOS. Step one more to the beacon. Step another through for that constant current turbo mode. Battery indicator. And then finally, you're into the programming of the levels. First one is the lowest mode. Second one is medium. And from here, double click. That'll get you into the engineering mode. Now, with this one, I've noticed that the first 11 steps were basically off. So what I mean by that is I believe there are 20 steps to program the engineering mode. I believe I'm on the 12th step now. So... Here we go, 13, 14, 19, 20. On the next step, it'll basically reset back down to step one, if you will, or zero. So there you go, you see this is off. Normally it should have been on, but again, like I said, this is about it matching the forward voltage on the LED for the driver. So we're gonna go to the next step here. Step one, you'll see it's still off. Two, three, 10, 11. Okay, so turn on on 11th, as you can see there. This is now programmed as the lowest mode for the low mode, although of course when I turn it on it actually is lower than that even. It's a true moonlight mode versus this. This is nowhere near moonlight mode. I don't think there's a direct correlation here like with the T01. I'll get Manker to clarify this, but I just wanted to highlight for now that that engineering mode is available on the U11 as well. From here, I'm going to shut it off. It's programmed. And when the light off, on the U11, one quick press should enter the lowest mode, which is that moonlight mode, as you see there. Now, if you're interested in more about this topic that's being discussed, I've got a link in the description. Hit that up, and then you can read it up on the BOF thread. And that's a wrap for this video. Thanks again for watching.